How's it going, friends? Sleepy here. Welcome to another episode of my weekly playlist series. It's Friday again, so that means it's time for me to share with you guys the games I've been playing during the week. I'll give you guys my thoughts and opinions on these titles, but I want to also hear about the games you guys are playing. I really, really have enjoyed in this series uh, listening to you guys talk about the games that you guys are currently playing because it gives me ideas of games to uh, check out. And I've actually played a few games um, because you guys were talking about playing them and I got my interest peaked in them. And I also appreciate any suggestions you guys might have for games you think I should check out because you guys have recommended some really great games. And there's been quite a few ones that I've been looking up and I've also picked up a few of them on your guys' recommendations and I'm looking forward to checking them out. So if you guys have any recommendations on games you think I should pl uh, play, let me know. I play games for a variety of systems all the way from the old Nintendo all the way up to the current Xbox One and PS4 console. So if you guys have a suggestion, let me know. I'm always looking for new games to play and experience. This is actually video number 90 in my uh, weekly playlist series. Can't believe we made it to 90 episodes of this. 90 weeks now of me sharing the games I have been playing. Uh, I've been doing really well with my goal that I had created a couple of years with playing more games and enjoying in my collection. Of course, I can't always play the amount of games that I want to because of work and other obligations. But I definitely have really improved upon my goal though of playing more games in my collection as I was really getting into collecting and kind of putting playing to the side and now because of this series and just having my goal you know I've just been playing more games and really really have been enjoying myself so I want to thank you guys so much for supporting this series and I'm looking forward to when we get to another 10 videos we'll have 100 so it's awesome now I did have a few months off last year uh, during the pandemic that I didn't complete this you know didn't continue this series and I was actually away from YouTube had a little break otherwise I'd be up higher but um overall I've really really enjoyed this series I've been uh having a blast sharing the games with you guys every week and it's just been really really fun so I got two games to share with you guys this week one that I've been continuing I've talked about it um in the last uh, few weeks, and then I got a brand new one I actually just started uh, this week, and I really enjoy it. The first one is uh, continuing my work on Metro Redux on Metro Last Light. I am getting very close to the end now. I'm going to finally have a beat here on the Nintendo Switch, which I have beat this uh, collection on the original Xbox 360, the original versions of Metro 2033 and Last Light, and then I played the Redux version many times on Xbox One and beat them both. And when I saw there was a Switch port, I wanted to get it just because it's one of my favorite series. And I want to be able to play it portable, which is what I do. I don't play this hooked up to the TV. I only play it in portable mode. I actually did hook it up the one night just to see how it looked. And really, it didn't impress me that much as far as uh, being on the big screen. Like, it looks decent on the in the gamepad when you're, you know, in portable mode. But when it was hooked up, it kind of reminded me of, like, Xbox 360 graphics. Like... Other Switch games, when you hook them up to the TV, you know they obviously look better than they do in handheld mode. But it looks like it was optimized for handheld mode. And then if just to me, it looked like this image was just stretched when it was on my big 55-inch uh, TV. So, I mean, it didn't look horrible, but it definitely did not look good as some of the other Switch games. So it definitely looks like, you know, they were more worried about making it look good on that smaller screen in portable mode. Which is fine with me, because that's what I want to play it on. I did want to warn uh, everybody, which I know um, I talked about this last week, is that this game is really dark, and it is there is no in-game setting to change the brightness, which sucks. And if you have any big light source around you, like you're outside or something, you know, don't even think about playing this game because you will not be able to see in the dark. You know, you need to be in like inside in like a darker uh, room to be able to see. Now there is one trick you can do if you have issues seeing, but it doesn't work outside. I already tried it. Is to go into your brightness setting on the switch in the settings and put it to max and then turn off automatic brightness thing because the, the game uh, turns dark. The console like keeps it darker that way. So doing that, you know, makes the game a lot easier to see and play, but it is definitely an issue that it had with what's being dark. And I wish they had an in-game slider for that. I, I just hate games when they don't have a brightness setting in game for you to tell you to adjust your TV. While the Switch isn't hooked up for me, I'm not playing it on the TV, so I can't adjust it. So I have to adjust the Switch. So other than that little minor gripe and that it doesn't look that great hooked to the TV, it's still a fantastic game. The story is amazing. The music is dark. The atmosphere really draws you in. Characters are awesome. The voice acting is done well. And I just love the game. It's a real 
crafted first person shooter you definitely need to experience i highly recommend you check it out you definitely need to play metro 2033 first and then play metro last light and then finally go and beat metro exodus because all three games are one giant overall story and trilogy about a uh, main character which is artium and the world is set in a post-apocalyptic world the russia the u.s and other countries have all nuked each other and pretty much everybody is dead in the world and it's all radiated and so 40,000 people fled to the metros under Moscow to uh, live and survive until they've created a new society down there. But of course, since it's a post-apocalyptic world, you know, people are, humans are on the brink of extinction and they're living um, in really bad conditions and eating animals and, you know, dealing with cancer. And of course, you're going to deal with criminals down there and there's a new Nazi regime down there, the Fourth Reich, and you also have the Soviet Reds are back. And then you just have your regular gangsters and bad people. And then you have your regular people. And they're all trying to coexist in the uh, metro. And that's where the game takes place in the story. And then sometimes you do get to explore the ruins of the city, which is really cool. There's some eerie parts to it. But because the world is radiated, there's actually a radiation up there. And you can't breathe up there. So you actually have to have a mask on. And by having a mask, you have to have filters. And so you are time while you're up there where you can only be up there so long before your character will start suffocating. And so you have to be quick sometimes when you're up there <laughs> unless you have a lot of time, which uh, resources can be scarce. If you play it in ranger mode, it's a lot easier and a more run and gun game. But if you play it on the hardest difficulty setting and you can really make it very, very difficult with very limited resources and stuff and it makes the game... Uh, crazy hard but makes a lot of, a lot of fun and you can play the game stealth like i do where you can go through and try to sneak through areas it makes the game a lot longer or you can go guns blaze and you gotta you kill everybody and just keep moving on there are two different endings there's a good ending there's a bad ending and depending on your choices in the game will affect your uh, ending there's one thing too i was going to mention i noticed in this version is they took the nudity out because there was a part in the game where you see um topless women or women that are naked and in this, they have broad underwear on. So for whatever reason, Nintendo decided to um, censor the game. And as, as I remember playing it on the Xbox One, I remember that girl was topless that I was getting a dance from. Well, in this game, she has a bra on. So for whatever reason, Nintendo decided to freaking censor an M-rated game. So just so you guys know, that is there, the nudity has been censored in the game for whatever reason. You know, that's Nintendo for you, but... Overall, it was still a really enjoyable game. Looking forward to beating it, and I really love being able to play this in portable mode. You know, I can just lay in bed at night and uh, play it, and I'm getting really cl uh, close to uh, beating it. I love the weapons in the game. It's a nice variety. You have weapons that were from before the war happened, which those are your best, and then you have your weapons that were put together down in the metro after the war, and of course those ones are kind of crappy. And then you do have a currency system, which is actually bullets, which is military-grade ammo, which are pre-war around, so back when they were made really well. Well, you can get ammo, obviously, down there that you use in the game that is made down there, so it's not as effective and kind of crappy. But those bullets that you get, those military-grade ones you find, are definitely key, because that's what you use to buy new weapons, to buy upgrades, and buy supplies. You, know, you trade them, that's their currency system. Now, they don't use cash anymore, because cash is useless. You know, it's a bartering system, and they use those... Uh, ammo carts because those are uh, gold for them down there and you know people need them you can actually use them as uh, bullets for a weapon if you absolutely need them because they do a lot more stopping power but I never use them I always save them for my uh, trading ability just a wonderful game you guys need to experience the Metro story it's awesome you can get it on 360 you got a PS3 you can get a PS4 Xbox one Nintendo switch the PC you definitely owe it to yourself go through the trilogy and play through the story you will not be disappointed you will really enjoy it and now guys we'll move on to our other game which i just started uh, playing this this week i did not know a whole lot about it, it just looked cool uh when i was reading it at gamestop and so i decided uh, i wanted to get the a brand new version of it i think it ended up being only like 20 bucks or something not a very expensive game this is the day one edition which is pretty much the only version but it comes with dlc and a really sweet map and that is a game called the sinking city from big ben this is a 2019 title looks it was just something that looked really interesting to me and i'll read the back for it says reverse reality it says seek out the truth as you explore a flooded city in this investigative adventure inspired by the works of the master of horror hp lovecraft 
explore an open city, survive cosmic horror, investigate sanity blasting cases. And this day one edition had the investigator pack, a map of Oakmont, which is a fictional city in Massachusetts. And that's where the city, ta that's where the uh, story takes place. And so you play as Charles Reed, who's an investigator, and you go to the city of, God, why can't I think of the day? I just said the city's name, damn it, <laughs> of Oakmont, and you're there to, to investigate the strange stuff that's happening because your character has been suffering from like, hallucinations and seeing creatures and shit. And you're drawn to this city to investigate what's going on with you because it's happening there. And then you find out that the um, actually the city actually got flooded, so a big portion of the city's actually flooded. A lot of people died, and you run into all kinds of weird people <laughs> and weird-looking people and just crazy people. There's some normal people and stuff, um, but you just get sucked into the world. And of course, because this is like a horror game, because there are horror elements. Um, I really love the music, the ambience in the game. It's really dark. It's always raining. Even during the day when it's light out, it's still like cloudy. And you get different degrees of darkness and lightness in the uh, game. And I've really, really enjoyed uh, my time with this game. I actually spent Tuesday... Uh, no, not Tuesday, geez. Well, I did, I did start playing it on Tuesday for uh, like three, three hours. But I spent a big time, I spent like eight hours on Wednesday, uh, was my day off, besides Monday, which I didn't play on Monday. I got to play like tw 12 hours, eight hours, 12, I don't know. <laughs> I played it a long time on freaking Wednesday. Started in the early, in the morning and played it well into the uh, evening because it just sucked me in. And I was just having a blast with it. So this has a main story that you're going through as a character and your investigator so you go to get to go through and investigate mysteries like murders or somebody's lost or something and it's really cool you have uh, all kinds of different abilities where you have this mind's eye thing where you can uh, turn it on and you can see things that like other people don't see and you have like supernatural type powers that you have uh, unlocked and as you play the story you know you earn skill points which are knowledge points which you can actually use to upgrade your character to have more health, do more damage, to earn experience faster, to see things better. And you can tailor the character to the way that you are uh, playing the game. There's also side uh, objectives that you can do as you run around the city, you run into random people who will give you different uh, quests. And doing those quests will unlock uh, rewards. Now since this city has been ruined, it's just like in a metro world where money is useless there you know they, they're in a bartering system and so they pretty much trade in uh, bullets and usable items that you can craft because the game does have a really great crafting system where you can craft health kits you can craft um bullets you can craft ammo you can craft things like molotov cocktails and primitive grenades and stuff like that because you need those weapons to fight the creatures that are in the world but there are also humans now the human enemies are fairly easy um they're definitely uh people that you want to take out with headshots which i have a uh, i have two uh pistols right now and i didn't mention this does take place in 19 in the 1920s so prohibition is going on with alcohol and stuff and so that's a 1920 setting so you have the cars and stuff from the 20s and the clothing and everything and i just really like the time period that it is uh, set in and it just fits well for a horror game so of course you're not going to have modern weapons you have today so you're going to have pretty primitive uh, weapons in the game and i really love that the character is an everyday guy he's not skilled in combat he's not skilled in weapons and stuff and so that reflects upon you when you're playing the game that your character is not perfect he's just an average joe which i like you know, these kind of games, I prefer the characters to be flawed and to be like your normal guy, like how they are in Silent Hill. You know, you're not an expert combat, you know, you're not Rambo or anything. So, you know, your combat, you know, you're not great with it. And so I like that. It adds to how authentic your experience is. And I just prefer that in horror adventure games like this. It's really cool. It's in third person. Um, it's open world. Once you beat the first main uh, story, then the city opens up to you and you can do whatever you want at any time. Go around and explore stuff. There are areas of the city where they're called infested, where it's infested with monsters. And you got to be careful because there's some really strong monsters there. 
but that's where the valuable loot is and you can go and collect loot now you can only hold so much of stuff but as you use that loot you know you craft things that you need and you unlock new weapons and you unlock new stuff that you'll find around the world um, but another thing that's really cool is your main character has different outfits he can wear and in my pre-order bonus I got a day outfit but if you beat certain side missions you actually unlock different outfits for it. So if you're someone that enjoys, you know, changing the cosmetic look of your character, which I do, and that's just some kind of fun to go around and collect the different uh, things, because there are some pretty cool uh, outfits that Charles wears. There's like a police one, there's ones that, um, that he arrives with at the beginning of the game, and then there's the day one that I have, and there's a few other ones in there that'll just look kind of cool, like a scientist outfit and stuff, and I, I like that kind of touch where you can, you know, make the character look the way you want with a different, the uh, collectibles there um i've been working mainly on the uh, side missions uh right now which i think there's maybe like 12 or so or maybe a little bit more side missions and i think there's about 15 or so main missions so overall you're looking at probably about a 20 something hour game if you know if you're looking at doing everything you know maybe you'll get longer like myself which i probably will get like at least 30 some hours out of because i've really been exploring a lot and just checking out the city and running into the random people that are in there and just I'm really loving this this game is awesome I'm so glad I gave it a try it just looked cool um, I really like uh, too that it has this sweet map of the city and it, it does have a fairly decent size uh, city that I, I can show you guys uh, this whole city here is all explorable and if you guys see those blue things, that is actually water. So not all the city is uh, accessible by walking around. You have to use boats in these water parts. Now any part that's here like this, you can actually walk around and explore. But boats are key to exploring stuff in the, uh, around the different cities. And they're all broken up into different little um, areas. Like you have Reed Heights, you had the Advent, you have Old Grove, you have Coverside. You have the Salvation Harbor, the Shell. So you have all these different little uh, subsections of the overall uh, city that you can explore. And there's all kinds, it's also spread out with all kinds of different um, missions and stuff to do. And it'll take you all over this uh, area to explore. And it's just really, really cool. And it's just something I really like. And I am glad. Yeah, we'll just. I'll put that away after this video. I just really like the, um, the the game, and I'm having a blast with it. It's great. If you guys are in to horror games, you know, if you guys like the uh, eeriness of Call of Cthulhu, because that's another one based off, you know, the HP Lovecraft, I would definitely suggest checking this game out. I really get a lot of Silent Hill vibes in this game. It's gone to the Unreal Engine, and so the graphics... Now, well, the graphics, I'm definitely going to say, are not like your top-tier Xbox One graphics. They're kind of like your... I would I would kind of compare them to, like, launch title graphics-wise for the Xbox uh, One console. But it still does not deter your uh, enjoyment from it. Now, there's a lot of weird-looking characters in this. Like, the animation they did. Even, like, your main character kind of looks a little derpy. And he looks like like some dude who hasn't slept in eight years and was, like smoked a hundred packs of cigarettes a day and drank 20 cans of beer more a day like he just looks he just kind of looks like uh like man like I, i've been through a lot of shit because he actually has been so i like that uh authentic look to him like he really looks run down he doesn't look like some kind of rambo guy or anything and it's just a fantastic story <laughs> i'm really enjoying the voice acting i think it's done really well and I just love the overall control of the game. Now, there are some glitches I haven't noticed. I had a couple of times issues with getting the game to launch. Sometimes it takes a while to load. And then sometimes I've noticed some screen tearing when, like, I'm turning the camera. And as the character's turning, and I see some, like, red and green um, tears on the side of the screen. And then it's really odd. Sometimes, like, you'll see, like, the, the moon gazing. Even though it's, like, cloudy, you'll see, like, uh, light. And as you move closer, that light actually moves... It's just really strange. This has to do with, you know, the lighting. I'm assuming that this was made, this Big Ben and Maximum Games and Frogwares. I'm assuming that this was made by a pretty small studio. So I'm, this is probably one of those, you know, smaller studio based uh, games. But it's done really well. And I think you guys should definitely give it a try. So definitely check out The Sinking City. You can get this on 
the PS4, you can get on Xbox One, and I'm pretty sure it's also on uh, PC. I do know, like I said, that a lot of people had run into issues uh, with the con with the console version when it first launched, but they had um, patched it, but I still have run into a few issues myself. Sometimes when I click the uh, menu to bring it up to check the map, you know, it'll like glitch for a second and then have a delay in loading. But um, overall, it hasn't really hindered my uh, love for the game. I've, like I said, I played that one, you know, Wednesday, like 8 or 10 or 12 hours or something. I don't even know the exact amount. I've <laughs> had a lot of time in this game uh, this week already, and I'm looking forward to beating it. So this is one of the ones I should have beat here, um, hopefully by the uh, end of the month, if I just keep playing it and going through the uh, story and beating the side quests and then beat the main uh, story. Uh, I'm not sure how many different endings there are to the game, but I do did, uh, did read that there are... Uh, several different ones, so that's definitely cool. I'm looking forward to checking uh, that out. I really love that you get to investigate stories. So if you guys had played a game, that game, um, L.A. Noir, where you actually have to study uh, clues and stuff and figure out what happened, you actually do some of that in this game as a prime investigator. You know, you actually like investigate a murder, and you got to look at the clues and you have to uh, figure out what happened to uh, continue the story and you actually can change the difficulty on combat and also with um, how you do the clue stuff because you can turn off like all the hints and help that the game has you you can play like in the middle like I do where it sometimes it helps you but it doesn't hold your hand you can play where it completely holds your hand tells you go here go there or you can turn all that off and you have to figure it out yourself which is actually still some of that too like it'll tell you to go to a certain part of the city well the city is not numbered there's things like that you know only the map tells you where that street is and sometimes there's some street signs and stuff but it'll tell you to go to like Leonard's between Leonard Street and Brook uh and Brook Road and so you have to go figure out where in that area in the city it is you know what section it's in and then go there to find it so you can make it really difficult like that where you have to really think yourself and get no hints and stuff so I like that it's really cool like I just playing it right in the middle like I normally do um but depending on how well I enjoy this game and if I really love the ending you know I may go back and play a second playthrough at some point. It's just a really fun game. I think you guys should check out. Definitely check out The Sinking City. We'll do our quick little recap here like we always do. I talked about Metro Redux for the Nintendo Switch. I'm working on beating Metro Last I already beat Metro 2033. It's a great first-person shooter set in a post-apocalyptic world. It has a great variety of weapons to choose from. You can customize. The lighting in the game is great. It's key if you want to do stealth. You know, you got to stay in the shadows. You can turn lights off. You can go guns blazing if you want to or do stealth. And it has a really wonderful story. I just rec I definitely recommend, though, that play Metro 2033 first, then go through Last Light, and then finally beat Metro Exodus. Because all three of them are one giant overall trilogy that shares the story of Artium. And if you jump into the later games after not playing the previous ones, you know, you'll be lost and not know the story. So it's definitely worth playing them in order because they all one long connective narrative. Definitely check it out. Whether you get it on the Switch, the PS4, Xbox One, 360, PS3, PC. I have many options available, and it's a fairly cheap and affordable game I think you guys should check out. And then we talked about uh, The Sinking City from 2019. This is a wonderful game based off of HP Lovecraft's a horror. So you have um, monsters and stuff that you fight. There's hallucinations in the game. You also fight uh, humans. I definitely did want to recommend, uh, let you guys know, though, that the combat... Uh, is difficult fighting enemies as you know sometimes you wish better to run they'll overwhelm you you know like i said because you're not a rambo guy so you know combat is uh, difficult for your character and it's also difficult for you to pull off and to be successful on but as you play you learn some tricks like i have learned some tricks with uh, grenades and mobs you know and how to take out enemies at a distance with guns and stuff you do have a melee weapon you can beat them but i definitely don't recommend that because some of those dudes will kill you like that but it's overall a really fun story. You get to be an investigator. You're investigating this city that's being that's been flooded. And there's all kinds of crazy shit happening and crazy characters. And your guys having hallucinations. And you're fighting monsters and seeing monsters. <laughs> and it's just a great story that I'm loving so far. You got main story to do. Plus you have side stuff. You have things to unlock in the game. It has just a great overall 
story and it's just been a really enjoyable time for me so definitely let me know your guys' thoughts if you played the metro series or if you played the sinking city what you thought of them i'd like to hear what games you guys are currently playing if you have any recommendations on a game you think i should check out let me know because you guys always do recommend really fun titles i want to thank you guys for watching take care you guys have an amazing day and sleepy we'll see you next time